Hey, it's Aton. Welcome back to our channel. It is officially Aton Eats the World time. Yes, that's right. My debut cookbook, Aton Eats the World, is coming out in just a few weeks. And today we are making my famous, or soon to be famous, cinnamon rolls. Yes, that's right. I'm a cinnamon roll man. I proudly love cinnamon rolls. I've always loved cinnamon rolls. I've been a loyal cinnamon roll enthusiast for quite some years, so I definitely would say I consider myself qualified to speak on them. Let's start off in our mixer with some more milk. It is very important that your milk is around 105 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's over 115, you're gonna kill the yeast, and there's nothing worse than some dead yeast. Here we go, we got our little bit of sugar in there. You gotta feed the yeast. The yeast is like us. It needs food or it gets a little hangry. Add that in. now. Fun little fact you may not have known. You know when you wait to kind of, for your yeast to proof and you give it like time to bubble up? That's actually just to tell you your yeast is alive. So I use this yeast all the time. I used it earlier this morning. I know it's alive. I don't have to do that. Next up, we have the rest of our sugar in there along with our whole lot of flour. And now one thing I like to do is I kind of like to add half the flour first and then the other half after just so it doesn't like make a mess everywhere. Two eggs, a little one-handed egg crack action in there. Ooh. Can I do it with my left hand? I think I can, let's see. I can, definitely more of a challenge, but I can do it. Uh, we have a little bit of our salt into there. And I'm just gonna start mixing this up while I quickly rinse my hands. I've been getting a lot of questions, you know, how long did it take to develop all the recipes in 18th the world? Where are these recipes from? And it's definitely a combination of recipes that I've been like literally making since I was a kid, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, cinnamon buns have been one of my favorites for so long. I don't remember the first time I made a cinnamon bun, but it was an incredible day. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping, Aton was eating cinnamon buns, a great day. And this one, you know, I've kind of just kept updating the recipe, making sure that it is, you know, up to par as I got older, learned more techniques. But this is definitely probably one of the like oldest recipes in Aton Eats the World. That is getting nice and mixed up. Also, very important, this is an enriched dough. So I have some softened butter and I'm just gonna kind of slowly add it in. You can add it all in at once, but this is more of a brioche technique when you kind of add in the butter slowly, so I'm feeling I'm feeling it today. That's what I'm doing, but you can also just add the whole stick in. You do you. All right, now my mixer's a little broken, so that's why it's kind of jumping. Your mixer hopefully shouldn't do that, but as you can see, it's now come together into a nice ball of dough. I'm just going to start increasing the speed to a medium. I'm going to let this knead for about five minutes, really incorporate that gluten. We're going to roll it out nice and big, so we need lots of little strong glutens in there to give it strength for us to roll. While it's kneading, you definitely can have some sticking on the bottom. You don't really want sticking on the sides. I'm gonna add in just a little hair more of flour in there. That'll help us a little bit, but it's still supposed to be kind of a sticky dough, like a little sticky to the touch. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great, this is coming together. This is looking good. We have lots of gluten in our dough. It has done what it needed to do. Get the dough hook out of here. Look at that. Ooh, that is what you call a nice enriched dough. Scrape that off. Spray your bowl so we have no sticking, and use a little scrapey scraper, bench scraper, and plop it into the bowl, maybe more carefully than I just did. And don't waste any from the bottom, like really scrape at it, get every little bit. We're trying to maximize our cinnamon roll-ness. There we go, dose in there, grab some plastic wrap, give that a little good wrap up, and look at that, that's what you call a happy dough. Let this rise till it doubles in size. Am I Dr. Seuss? Maybe a moose. The smell of cinnamon rolls is in the air. Cheer is around us. And it is time to make the cream cheese glaze to go on top of cream cheese icing. Take a whole, whole bunch of cream cheese into your stand mixer along with a stick of butter. Yes, that's right, cream cheese and butter and cream that up until they get nice and kind of incorporated and light. Perfect, nice and mixed up. Now it is important to note, I personally right now am making a double batch uh, in A Ton Eats World. I only have you make half of this, but that's for like a normal human amount. I'm proudly not a normal human, so I'll be making double, uh, but you know, you're, if you're a normal human being, then follow the recipe in the book. But if you're not a normal human being like, like me, double it, triple it, take a bath in it. Maybe not that, but I won't judge you personally. Here we go. Ooh, I didn't even spill, look at me. And slowly mix it up so you don't have a cloud of sugar. And slowly increase the speed. 
Then for some flavor, a little vanilla extract. And you know, you wanna balance out the salty sweet. A little bit of salt, right in there. And just beat that up to incorporate some air. Ooh, that looks good. All right, let's give this a try. Look at that. What I love about a cream cheese icing is that it is just like it's tangy, sweet. Mm. You have the sweetness from the powdered sugar, the tanginess from the cream cheese. It's the perfect combination for a happy icing. My dough is doubled in size. It is nice and risen, as you can see. Dump it out onto, well, get a little flour first. Flour my surface. I wanna roll this into a 12 inch by 24 inch rectangle. So a little flour on the surface, dump that out there, a little more flour on top, and just roll it out into a large rectangle. I like, just look at this dough. It rolls so nicely, it's so enjoyable. It's kind of like a pillow of happiness in dough form. The gluten is what's allowing us to do this, so you really do not want to skimp on your kneading in the bowl. It is super duper important to get it as even as possible, so don't rush the process. Really just make sure that you are getting it nice and evenly rolled out. This recipe is really a perfect kind of example of what I'm trying to do with Eats and Eats the World. You know, this is a dish that maybe intimidates you. are like, oh, there's a dough, there's the filling, there's the icing, there's so many steps. You have to let it rise twice. But I really want to show you that making these delicious foods that you crave at home is easy. You can do it. You can have fun while doing it. That is really the point of Eats and Eats the World. And I'm having fun. Are you having fun watching? Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. Yes, yes. Butter time. A lot of people will go out here melting their butter and then putting it on here. But when you do that, it's already melted. It then melts quicker in the oven. You're left with just a pool of butter on the bottom of the cinnamon rolls. You don't want that. You want buttery rolls without. Therefore, softened butter is your friend. Take your softened butter and just slather it all over the top of your dough. It's kind of like painting with oil paint, but on dough and with butter. Therefore, nothing like it. Get it all the way up to the edges so we have a nice, evenly buttered slab o dough. That's one word, slab o dough. That looks great. Brown sugar is super important when making cinnamon rolls. You know, I really want to have that deep flavor, and brown sugar is really just sugar mixed with molasses. I use a dark brown sugar because it has even more molasses in it. That's what gives it that color, and it'll just really make it more caramelly and just delicious. So use dark brown. Then, Add in cinnamon, mix that up. Cinnamon, of course, is one of the stars of the show. Get that nice and mixed, a little tossy toss. And just, this is where you can have fun with it. Sprinkle all over the dough. Use your hands to spread that all over, and then you actually kind of want to press it in. You're kind of giving this like a deep tissue massage, but not because you don't want to break the dough. So a gentle deep tissue massage, getting that all over, and then just kind of a firm pat of the hands to press that into the butter and dough so that it stays in place. Rolling time. Tension is your friend when it comes to this. So I'm just going to take the first kind of flap, roll it over, and then use some tension to pull and roll the next. Pull a little bit and roll the next. This will just help ensure that you get some nice, you know, just well held together rolls. A little pull and roll, pull and roll, pull and roll, pull and roll. We have our nice long log. We want to cut this into 12 rolls. Got a straighter knife and you want to be very precise with this. I highly recommend using a ruler and let's measure. This should be about 24 inches. You know, it may have changed a tad mid rollout. Let's see, we have 12 inches here and then 12. All right, we're rocking more like 26 inches, but what we could do is just cut off those kind of ends at the end that are not fully beautiful. Here we go. So we now have our nice log. Let's just make sure we got 12 inches there, 12 inches there. So this is our midpoint. And what I like to do is first score them and then actually cut them. So we have our middle point here. I'm gonna cut each of them into six. They should each be two inches long, looking good. So I'm gonna just make a little mark. There we go, and that's gonna give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 buns. So just take your knife and cut them. So just saw back and forth, very gentle pressure to just break right through without actually pushing it down that much. 
And the last cut. And look at that beautiful interior. The perfect roll. Grab a buttered nine by 13 and just place them in there in rows of three by four. Catch a towel, cover it, and we are going to let these proof again. Now, I recommend about half an hour, but it's very important. With an enriched sweet dough, it can take quite a while to rise. So take half an hour with a grain of salt, really go by the visuals. You want it to really puff up, not double in size, I would say like a more like a 1.5, just to get nice and puffy, and then we're gonna bake. Just popped it off there and our rolls are nice and puffed up. I'm now baking in the oven. Now, you could bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Mine's a convection oven, so I'm at 325. I'm gonna probably check it after 25, but in general, I recommend checking it at about 20 minutes just to see where you're at with your rolls. I am ready to eat these rolls. Take them out. Ooh, those are looking mighty fine if I may say so myself. Look at that swirl. Let's take our rolls right onto here. And now what these need is to be slathered with some of our icing all over the top. So I just like to, you know, put it in some large globules all over the top for us to then spread out. What I personally recommend when icing your rolls is to start off with a thin layer. This initial thin layer is going to melt slightly from the heat of the rolls and it just kind of like, you know, soaks down into the nooks and crannies, gets all that like icing flavor in, in between them. Uh, and that's just really the key. So I'm really just going over, getting them nice and iced and hoping that some of that heat will slowly melt them before we apply another layer. Grab a spatula, very carefully pull out one of our rolls and ooh, look at that, ooh, right onto there. I mean, you have that golden brown exterior. Let's give it a try. Use that fork, just break it open. Look at that. Cheers, let's give it a try. Okay, gotta, I feel like you're obligated to take more than you can actually eat. Hmm. Cinnamon rolls are seriously the ultimate comfort food. Give me this at 5 a.m. for breakfast. Give me this for dinner. Give me this for a late night snack. There is never the wrong time to have a cinnamon bun. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want the recipe, you can find it in my debut cookbook, Aton Eats the World, available now for pre-order. Pre-orders are so important for us authors. So, it would mean the world to me if you pre-order Aton Eats the World. If you want to support my work, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below. What recipe are you excited for in 18 the world of what I have posted? And I cannot wait for you to cook these yourself. And yo, enjoy comfort from my kitchen to yours. Food can bring comfort, can bring happiness, can bring great times. And these cinnamon buns do all those and more. Mm. See me. I have a date with my cinnamon roll.